idea that, oh, if you can see it in a video, you know, form somewhere, you're not going to want to go is now put to rest. What people are finding out is that if you watch the digital, it just is increasing your appetite to go buy the ticket for the live. And in fact, it is reducing the risk of buying that $125 for a ticket because, you know, you already saw it. You love it. You like the music. And now, oh, hey, I'm going to bring my husband because I know he's going to like it. You know, the, the risk has been eliminated with the digital view that sampling of it and it's a different experience when you're there live so well I would say also that it's uh, educational for not only the existing theater lovers or musical lovers it's educational for people who just want to you know want one musical and then like oh there's all this other stuff and then they become a better theater more aware uh, theater you know aficionado and it will potentially drive more actual real ticket sales because they are develop an even larger passion and, and more knowledge about the the medium and I think that's very exciting I'm kind of curious um, a, about the business of maintaining yourselves because you don't want this to go away uh, when theaters come back and you want it to not only be additive but you want it to be a thriving streaming service so tell me a little bit about um, the business of Co uh, original content or content content acquisition, uh, how you drive more viewership. Do you use a recommendation engine? Like what is helping you drive a little bit of, um, you know, greater viewership? What's well, what are we the have, tools? We, we have certain uh, the, you know, many venues that are available to us <clears throat> uh, that you'd be amazed at how many, uh, how many people actually recorded their own performances beforehand. So we've been able to encompass not only the Broadway shows, a lot of the off-Broadway uh, shows. In fact, we, we shot one off-Broadway, uh, Buried Child, with Ed Harris, uh, you know, a while back. So, so we wow. got the licensing capability. Sam Shepard, oh. Sam Shepard, Ed Harris, unbelievable. Yeah, Sam, and it's a terrific performance if, if you get a chance to see it. Uh, so we get a lot of licensing that we've been doing here, and going forward, we're going to be looking forward to creating our own material besides just shooting live performances. You're part of the concept we had initially was to you know, recreate, not, not replace live theater, but recreate the sense of being in a, in a theater with people in a live performance. So there's a certain visceral feeling about it, a real authenticity to seeing the actors on stage, working hard, holding for applause at the end, to get the real sense of experience of what it's like to be in a theater. And as you pointed out, most people don't get to go to see a, a professional Broadway production. So the designers, the sets, the costumes, the performances, this is the cream of the crop that America has to offer in terms of entertainment. And it's there on Broadway and now available. So the licensing, shooting, and even going down the road, creating our own material and experimenting in a studio with a live audience, back in the theater, uh, point of view show. You know, we, we spent was it over 18 cameras when we shot She Loves Me uh, way back when. And so, you know, we've got a certain ability to uh, create sound, enhance the sound and visibility of the show. And it's not just a movie or a TV show, it's a new art form where we're doing point of view shots, angles, uh, and, and of course, including the audience. And I think you won a, a Tony for an original musical, She Loves Me, or was it an original? It's not original, we, but you we, won a, for, no, for the first live streamed Broadway show. Yeah, Guinness World Record. So that was kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. And we were hoping to do it again. We're hoping to do it again. Another, you know, live stream of an opening night would be a first. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, I mean, and where are we, you know, where are we getting our audiences? I mean, again, we're when somebody is searching for Broadway to see when is it coming back. When are they going to be able to buy tickets again? Broadway HD just keeps organically moving up in the searches. So um, because the people keep clicking on it because, you know, it's like, oh, hey, you know, in the meantime, let me just watch this. Um, and people are talking about us, um, you know, as a, as an alt, as a, not an alternative, but, you know, as, as something else, as, as something to watch while we're, while they're missing the theater. Um, and, you know, we have 41 Broadway theaters in New York City. There's 200 across the U.S. touring theaters. Um, but when the shows go out, they go to one of these cities for maybe two weeks. Um, um, so if you weren't in Dallas when that, you know, 
show came through, She Loves Me or uh, Kinky Boots went through, then you missed it. You know, there's a lot of people that just don't get to the theater. Um, so, you know, Broadway HD has sort of very specific you know, groups of fans. So we have, you know, the sort of the, the major ones are the people that can spend the $125 for a ticket. They go to the theater probably like 10 times a year, a hundred dollars a year for 300 shows is a no, you know, they don't even have to think about it. No brainer. Let me just sign up. So we have those people. Then there's a whole group of people that are never going to get I'm just never going to set foot inside of a Broadway theater. They've always loved it. Either the geography isn't there for them, you know, or they can't afford it, you know. And then the other group, interestingly enough, is more in the realm of professional development. Because if you're working on a Broadway show, you're not available at eight o'clock at night to go see shows. So it's your really your only, it could be your only possibility to be able to see a show is to be able to see it digitally. Um, so, you know, we're providing, we're taking down barriers of access and accessibility is really one of the, the, the key missions at Broadway HD. It's about bringing down those barriers, whether that's geography, whether that's economics, or whether there's some sort of physical, you know, limitation to you that you can't get to New York City, or you don't drive at night, or you're not comfortable in Times Square. You know, and the other thing that is so important to me, you mentioned earlier, one of our genres is the trailblazer rail. And that kind of accessibility is in who, you know, so we have who gets to see the shows is one type of accessibility, but the other type is whose shows get to be seen. And so with, you know, the statistics on Broadway of how many women composers are on Broadway, how many women directors, how many women lyricists and playwrights, you know, there's 41 Broadway theaters. The last full season of Broadway, there was only two female directors. It was only one female composer. And I think there was three lyricists, um, you know, the casts are almost 50-50, but, you know, the, the, the people of, you know, the BIPOC population, the representation is even worse, you know, so when we have the opportunity to do a capture or license a capture of a show that is by an underrepresented uh, person um, or or, or creative team, uh, we try to go for it. And we put it up and when, you know, on the internet, it is a, it's a, it's a level playing field. So we can put, you know, a Paula Vogel's Indecent, you know, up there with uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber, you know, um, it, you know, it's, um, it's amazing. And it's, it's part of the access that we provide is whose shows get to be seen. And that's what we do in our trailblazer rail that I really think is important. I think going forward, uh, one of the uh, additions that we get to offer uh, in the future is going to become an intricate part of the theater industry, not only as a marketing tool to sell tickets, but to introduce new shows. Right now, most of the shows we've shot are either been uh, limited run shows, uh, to more to the point like we're not cannibalizing ticket sales, or shows that were about to close, or touring shows that were just about to end. But now we're looking at us as a way of shooting shows before they come to Broadway. It's a way of marketing a show, especially a show without a star, let's say, uh, that you want to get publicity for, you want to get uh, recognition for, you want to get uh, advertising for. And we've actually been talking to companies where they've actually shot the shows uh, already, like out of town in Canada or in, uh, on the West Coast before they've come to New York. And then they can show it on Broadway HD before they get to town, even as a tool to raise money for the project. And then, of course, if it does open on Broadway, they're not going to go to London right away. It's usually two or three years till they get to go on, uh, on tour or go overseas. We could actually be showing it on Broadway HD in the UK or Canada before it goes on tour. You need a category we're... called regional. Yep, yeah, regional. there you go. Regional. Well, you know, I think you... Go go ahead. The stock. stock. Or stock yeah. or something, yeah. you know? Well, Stu's point, I think, is about geo-blocking. So we have the possibility on the internet of geo-blocking. So if somebody's, you know, concerned with cannibalization of the live tickets in a certain market, then we can geo-block that market. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, that's possible with the internet. Um, and uh, and I think, you know, earlier you had, you know, there was a question about like, why, why are we not ad supported? Um, our content, is you know shot uh, like like the experience in the theater as much as we can, and there's one intermission, and we you know 
we don't ever plan on interrupting the content with ads in the middle of it. Um, when we also have agreed at this point not to put, you know, running ads or banners down the bottom or the top of, of our content. Uh, so it was very mindful, very specific. Um, I think that the, uh, you know, the art form itself sort of lends itself more to a real focus. We're not something that is just this sort of short form content. We're not content that's really um, you know, binge worthy, you're not looking at like, Oh, one, you know, like one thing after another, we have that with some of our family friendly shows that I think that families with young children are watching, you know, wind in the willows over and over again. Um, but you know, most people, it's much more, um, you know, you might, you're much more invested in it. It's something that it's a little bit, uh, you know, a, a real sit down and watch. It's not, something for the background, <laughs> you know, um, you're really, you're really sitting and watching. Um, and that didn't really lend itself to breaking up uh, with ads. Um, we also thought, um, and at the beginning, we were uh, transactional, we did do a TVOD piece there. Um, and, uh, and found that, you know, people were just much more happy with let's go for a month. And I think we did that when we launched because I think a lot of people weren't sure with like a new streaming platform that was, you know, six years ago of coming out. It's like, oh, if I sign up for a year, are these guys even going to be here next month? You know, so it was a much more easy uh, introduction to the, to the marketplace by saying, okay, you know what? You want to just watch one show? You can just watch one show. You want to just one month? You can do one month. I mean, we still do uh, monthly in addition to our annual subscriptions, but I think that was part of like, what was the business model and what was the choice in that? Um, you know, now in COVID where there's a lot of TVOD stuff going on, um, but it's more, the content is, I mean, when I've I mean, tried the aggregators, to, right? you mean there's this the rise of these new aggregators that are going to be aggregating the aggregators, like I sort of mentioned to you in email before this, yep, um, yep, yep. that company Stroom and Screen Hits TV, um, where they want to uh, uh, make your content available to their customers on a, on a movie or show by show basis with credits and then maybe upsell a subscription to Broadway HD if well, that person well, shows well, interest. What do you think about all that? Well, one of the things we discovered uh, in, in deciding whether we should go for SVOD or not was that the nature of the theater industry, especially the commercial theater industry, has always been individual shows. Uh, the only subscribers on Broadway were the nonprofit organizations, your Lincoln Centers, your Manhattan Theater Clubs, your Roundabout Theater. They could do a subscription, but a Broadway show was always a freestanding entity. When we decided we wanted to build a library of shows, uh, you know, three, over 350 shows now, uh, that's something you want to subscribe to because you have a selection. You have a nice wide choice to go for. So we felt that was the better way. And once you get them, there are uh, sustainability, the, the re-upping of uh, subscribers has been extremely strong. Because as I said earlier, theater people are very loyal if they find something that they like that deals with live theater. To the, to the Stroom and these other sort of aggregators that are allow you to sample, you know, multiple platforms within their platform. Um, you know, it's a really interesting concept. I think that our content is complicated because we had almost a reverse uh, business model of Netflix. You know, when Netflix started, it was really just like, oh, here, rent a DVD. You know, it was, they weren't producing anything. It was all just, it was aggregating and it was being the first to market with streaming. Um, and then once all the other streamers started coming in, I think then the stakes were raised and they stepped up to like, oh, geez, we, we're going to have to produce content. We're going to have to have exclusive content here. And I think that, you know, Broadway HD was kind of the reverse of that. As I said, we were involved with about 10 shows that we uh, did the digital capture of, but we needed to go license in order to be able to, you know, have the bulk, have the, you know, the mass uh, of the, the deeper library in order to be able to, to really start a subscription uh, business off of it. Um, so we kind of flipped our, you know, so we started off by priming the pump by shooting shows. Um, and then we kind of went and looked to our colleagues and said, you know what, here's how you make 
the money on a, a digital digital capture, you know, so there's a lot of that going on now. And, and so we've kind of flipped, but you know, COVID has the whole world upside down. So again, we're looking at things and saying, you know, we really, maybe we do need to invest in some of these other, um, you know, or, or in, enhance some of the productions that are being done because there's two different um, groups when you do a digital capture. There's the stage version and then there's the TV crew version. So it's almost like two teams um, and they both have to be available. And, uh, you know, for Broadway, it's entirely unionized. And the TV unions are, you know, TV industry is unionized as well. Oh my goodness. So what, what would you say are your top, you know, three to five um, bless you. What, what would you say are your top priorities um, as we, you know, uh, go into 2021, which is where we are now, but 22, 23, as COVID hopefully subsides, what are your top priorities for bringing on new features versus new content? What, how do you think, because the reason I bring that up is because I think that eventually there, there are, because there are so many streaming options out there for people, you know, um, not necessarily in this category, but that they're going to have to enhance with metadata, with community features, with commerce, with interactivity. I think that eventually all of that will happen. I'm just wondering who's going to do it first, more so. Um, I'm, we just reported about uh, some in, an interactive platform that's working with Google uh, Android TV to deliver a whole interactive experience through that, but that's, there are not many of those. Anyway, top, top things that are on your bucket list. For Broadway HD. It's, it's really, uh, you know, building subscribers, still building subscribers. We're, you know, our social platforms are really robust. And especially now that, you know, we're, again, we're one of the few fu fully functioning uh, businesses in the Broadway industry. So it's, it's all about building community through our social, um, so, so our social platforms. Um, it's about acquiring content. It's about being good partners with the theaters that are out there, with the producers that are out there. It's about being respectful of the content itself. You know, as I said, we agreed we're not going to chop it up with ads. We, when we go in and we want to shoot a show, we bring in a TV crew that respects the integrity of the creatives that did the stage version, you know, which is extremely important. It's, you know, it's the only way for us to go when we, uh, when we head into a theater is to say the vision that, you know, those, the director and the, you know, the people, the, the writer, the composer, the lyricist or the playwright, we, we need to protect their integrity of, of that, of that show uh, when we go in. Um, I think so it's, you know, building community. It's about, you know, acquiring new content. It's about, you know, being the best partner that we can be to our, our content providers, which are their producers in the industry. Well, in addition to that, uh, we're looking to cybersecurity, top-notch priority for us, and the customer convenience to make sure that they can get they can, they, can, they can get the shows they want, they can forward and go backwards with it, that they, they get what they want for it. And of course, going forward, and we're looking down the road now, virtual reality, augmented reality, all the possibilities that we can do because we're in the digital world. And that's the interesting thing. We went, went with an executive that the one of the major corporation here, and we were showing them, this is what we plan to do. We're gonna be streaming this show and this show and this show, we've got the rights and the union's all on board. And the guy shows me, he says, wait a minute. And he takes out a DVD, he says, I have that show right here. And I go, that's so 20th century. That's so last, look to the future. That's, that's the buggy whip that you're looking there. I've got the future, I've got streaming. And that's where we're going to be. And that's why Bonnie and I were able to be there first, to be the first ones there to offer digital live captured shows. Very important to us to be there, to set the standard. And now we are, people point to us and go, we want to be as good as Broadway HD. Yeah, so to just jump off of that, it's that first to market. You know, so as I said, we are the ones that we have the largest, uh, deepest, uh, ca you know, catalog uh, for for theater, for, you know, theater on, on video, um, on screen. Um, and we were the first to market. So uh, that's huge. 
Um, and so Stu said that sort of like set a standard there with, you know, what are you doing? You know, how far can you go? And then just, you know, our passion is really the live stage. So it's being supportive of where that content is coming from. Um, you know, we're looking to do whatever we can do to help the live theater industry. That's really important to us. All right, well, that sounds good. There's so much more to know, but I think we have really covered it in, um, in detail. Uh, and I know it's only going to evolve going forward because you have so much passion and you have the knowledge about the industry to help direct it and to make it uh, an authentic experience for people who love theater and people who are professionals in theater. So I'm, I'm sure this is only going to grow and become um, a, a great service. I mean, it is, but I mean, to be a more successful service going forward. So congratulations. And thank you so much for sharing your time and uh, your love of theater with me. Thank you. We're so happy that you're a theater fan too. Thanks for having us on. No problem. Can't wait till we have your show streaming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's, don't go away. Don't um, don't click off. So I want to mention a few other things to you about some ideas that you uh, might be interested in, maybe, um, because sometimes I like to share these things. But anyway, thank you so much. Please, uh, you, uh, you will see their bios, everyone, on our site, which are long and interesting, and you certainly should go to BroadwayHD.com and sign up because. I mean, seriously, the ticket price is right. You want to see these shows. And uh, I'm sure it, it would be a great afternoon, a nice Sunday afternoon at the theater. When you uh, with great, your, Tracy. With Thank your you. bowl of popcorn. Thank you very much, Stuart. That's Stuart Lane and Bonnie Cumley, uh, co-CEOs. Yes, co-CEOs of Broadway HD. And I'm Tracy Swedlow. Please contact me, Tracy, at tvotshow.com if you would like to tell your story and uh, tell me about your passion and what you're doing in the TV industry. Thanks again, everyone. And uh, that's it. Take care. Bye. Okay, cut.